Hey guys, it's Newmaster, and welcome back to another Redstone video. In this video, I will be talking about analog busing. Uh, I was inspired to make this video from a guy named Hatton Poker 9 uh, I'll link his channel in the description, um, who was making something, and he needed a very compact way to bus a lot of information in a small space. And uh, the only way that, that um, he asked me for help, and the only way that I could really figure out how to do it, was to use analog busing. Now, the problem most people have with analog busing is that it is very slow. Like, you need, well, normally, you need a little um, repeat, uh, comparator every, this is every four blocks for the most efficient way to bus a signal of one. Right, so I'm busing a signal of one through here, and I need a comparator every other block, pretty much, because otherwise it wouldn't work. See, the signal runs out. Now, uh, for decimal or for a uh, hex busing, when you have all the levers, like the whole lines filled up, you do need to use this type of repeater bus. But when you are uh, only using decimal like this one two three four five six seven eight nine yes seven nine um he was only using decimal and uh, when i when I was using this a while ago on a different project, I was only using decimal as well. There's actually a little trick you can do to uh increase the speed of the bus per distance a little bit, and it looks a little bit like this. So instead of having it repeat, you actually subtract it from 15. What this is going to do is it's going to it's going to give you a high signal when you have a low signal out here and a low signal when you have a high signal. So it basically just inverts it. And um what's going to let me do is it's going to let me use these extra 6 blocks here to um use every before every repeater. So I can see I'm using the higher end of the spectrum now since see this is a signal of 15 and if I turn this on it'll be a signal of 14. So instead of using a re repeater here again having to use one right here since I'm using the higher end of the spectrum by inverting this I can bring this out six blocks before needing another repeater. So um, I can do that and then I'm gonna need one right here so it's going to be like that. And then this becomes your normal uninverted state again. So uh, if that's one, let me grab some uh, lamps here. Put this here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this will be equal to uh, that over there. So uh, if I turn 2 on, that 2 will turn on, 3 on, that 3 will be on, uh, all of them on, all of those will be on. So um, as you can see, instead of having to have a comparator every single, well every, every like 4 blocks I think, like for the uh, blocks after it like this, um, instead of having to do that, you have a much, much more efficient method of busing. And uh, I'm just going to continue this pattern out a little bit just so you guys can see how it works a little bit better. Um, since it is it is a bit confusing to grasp. Uh, every time you make a diff if you want to use a different amount of uh, inputs, like say I only wanted to use these two levers, I'd have to figure out how um, how far this has to go between each repeater but um that's just a simple counting counting signals and stuff one two three four five six and then that will uninvert it again it'll be our normal signal here and I can use a block here and one two three four five six and then I can put a lamp here should be that I think that's right. I 
I believe that's right. So if I turn this on, all those will be on, yes. Did I count correctly? No, I didn't. There we go. Now, okay, so we have our bus, but there's another problem. I only turned one lever on. I didn't turn all of them on, so I should only be getting this signal out. I shouldn't be getting all these other ones. Now, it turns out there is a method that you can uh, use to solve this as well. Um, I've heard it called a red coder. It's made by uh, some other guy. Uh, I actually have a better design for it that I came up with myself that I'm going to be using here. So basically what this is doing is taking all of the outputs and then taking all the outputs minus one and only letting that last one through. So if I have pistons here, need my wool. Have to have that orange wool. And then another set of repeaters right here. You will see that it will only let out the last signal, basically because this is running out right here. So this is um this signal minus one so it will only let through the farthest signal on the um, particular data input so um, if I enter two for example it will only let in that two, it won't let in the one because there's, all, there's a, um, a signal here uh, this is slightly more uh, this is slightly better than Cube Hamster's design. He used some other design with torches or something, but um, this one works better. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually show a practical use of this type of busing. I'm going to jump into some. Uh, tat I'm going to jump into Tatten Poker's server and uh, actually show how I bust his device. So I'll see you. All right, so I am on Tatten Poker's server. Um, this is his little creation that he's making. Um, well, not little. This thing is not little, but um, uh, I'm not going to show off too much of this because he's actually making a video on it. But um, basically, what he had to do is he has this button panel. There's 30 buttons here, and they're in a tight location. There's a very little room between these here, and he had to bust them all the way down here into these lines down here. Now, he could not figure out a way to do it himself, so he asked me to come on and help him, uh, and basically challenged me to do this. Uh, this is the only way that I could figure out how to do it. So, it's, you see, I used the, um, these analog buses using the inverts like this, and then uh, these decoders here into decimal again into uh, these lines. So if I go up here and uh, enter enter in a specific button let me just grab a lever. Let's just do the bottom bottom second one in on that one. You can see that that corresponds to the bottom second one in on these lines. So basically there are 30 lines coming through these uh, these three buses here. Um, yeah. It's pretty much as compact as you're going to get for busing. I mean, there is a downside that it is still slower. Uh, this spiral down is about six ticks, but you, there's no other way you're going to get it down here. There's no other way you're going to get 30 lines through that small space. It just It's just not going to happen unless you really like go out here somehow or something especially since these are buttons there's no other way to pull an output off buttons other than that so he has this nice button panel with all the buttons close to each other and uh, all the all of these are bust quite nicely uh, I should just turn that off 
basically, uh, this type of busing, uh, I'm gonna call it like panic busing or uh, last resort busing. Like, it's basically like, oh, you forgot. I forgot that I have to bust 30 lines through a five block space. Oh no, what am I gonna do? Oh, I can do this. Um, that's basically how how this happened. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I thought I'd just show this off since it's really really useful for last minute panic situations and projects. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll link Tat and Poker's channel in the description. Uh, it, it is in Spanish, but um, it's still really cool. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.